Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to Stray, where Clementine has sacrificed herself so that we can escape via the subway. Yes, that's right Ginger, it's all very sad. I'm not entirely sure what we're supposed to be doing because I'm a cat and I wasn't really paying that much attention to what Clementine was telling me, but it's got something to do with powering up the subway. Yeah, that's why we got the atomic battery from the Neko Corporation factory. That much at least I was paying attention to, but why we need to get into the subway and where the subway is going to take us, I... Sorry, I, I just wasn't paying attention. There was something bright and shiny distracting me. So, subway powered down. This will be why we need the atomic battery. There was a light over here though that I'm going to have a quick investigate of. Yeah, this thing's well and truly dead. Oh, nope, didn't mean to jump up there. There we go. Yeah, that thing. A whole bunch of red lights. Problem. Oh, wait a minute. Power cable. Ah, this will be it. So follow the power cable. Ooh, red light. Does that... No, no, it's just a, it's just a sodium light. I thought they were going to be zergs. So... Uh, yep, there we go. One battery used, and that's powered everything up. You probably noticed that everything here in this world appears to have been built by the Neko Corporation. Neko, of course, Japanese for cat. You know the old Koni Nami, Koni Nami, Koni Nami, Koni Nami, Koni Nami, Koni Nami, Nami Neko. I promise to never do that again. <laughs> Okay. I seem like an awful lot of fuss to go to just to power up the uh, subway. But anyway, it's done. Well, not the... I mean, that was simple. We just plugged in the battery and threw the switch and off we go. But an awful lot of fuss to go through in order to get the battery in order to power up the subway. And I still don't know why I'm on the subway. I, I, where, where are we going? Nobody tells me anything. I'm sure it'll all be fine. Oh, control room. That sounds fairly definite. I, I love what they've done with the lights here, by the way. Control room. I think we may be coming to the end of the game. Let's have a... Okay. Stairs. Robot. A strangely fresh and new looking robot, or at least well maintained. Without much of a personality. Enjoy the world's safest city. I know the stairs were on that side, I'm just going to have a quick look this side, see if there's anything here I should be... You know, maybe a... no, it doesn't look like it. There might have been a memory there or something. So we're going up here. Stairs to the left of me, stairs to the right, but I'm a cat and I do what I want. <laughs> More robots. Hello, I'm a cat and your helper 062 and you do not have an awful lot to say. It's like these cats, cats, robots, they, hello, yeah, you are painting the area. It's like they never developed personalities. Unlike, you know, the robots everywhere else, the ones stuck in this control room. It's like they got regular software updates or something. Ooh. Door to the outside, maybe? City sealed. Hello, Mr. Robot. I'm a cat. That's the door to the outside. Please refer to any certified engineer inside the control room. Okay. There's another one over there. And up here. They're all just going about routine maintenance tasks, aren't they? 
it's like all of the robots up here have actually received regular software updates and they've never and there's the city unlike the robots down there who for I don't know how many hundreds of years have basically had to look after themselves outside any direct control from the central computer up here which is why they've evolved but the robots up here never did Oh, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, B12 used to be a human. He was a scientist. Um, he's long dead. But his personality was downloaded uh, into a computer, which is being run as a simulation in B12's onboard memory. So, what's going on here? Alright, I can't reach that. So, I need to find... Um, yeah, one of these things. When I was getting the atomic battery out of the uh, Neko Corporation factory, you can use these things to, uh, as you can see, they. I'm not quite sure what the hell they are. Best box in the world, I know that. Okay, can I jump up from here? Nope, still not close enough. Alright. Can I... Oh, wow. <laughs> it's... Told you, best box in the world. I've never actually tried operating one of these while sitting on it, <laughs> so that's new. <laughs> Come away until this late in the game to find out you could do that. Okay, let's, let's see if we can push it into place. Oh, almost, almost, nearly there, and and it kind of once you get it close enough, it. Okay, that is clearly where it needs to be, because now I can't move it, and yet I still can't access that. So what am I doing wrong? Well, it, it took me longer than I'm comfortable admitting to figure out how this one worked. It's actually pretty simple, and the clue was when B12 said you had to work together. You'll be happy to know that it didn't take me nearly as long as it did to figure out. But when we were in the jail, all I needed to do to get the key was just to walk through the open window. <laughs> but still, I really should have been paying attention to what B12 was saying. It's actually very simple. B12 does what drones do best. Hacks the panel. And you do what you do best. Destroy stuff. <laughs> and then between the two of you, is he? Teamwork. You get the door open. So now we're in the control room. What's that? Nothing. Okay. Do I have to wait for some... No, I don't. Right. Well, we're in. Right, so we made it to the control room, and that's B12's final memory unlocked, as you can see. There are a couple of incidental memories that I missed along the way. I'll probably have to do myself another playthrough and see if I can get them all. Although the only thing that you actually get out of it is a sense of completion and some extra badges for your harness. Uh-huh. What's this? Yeah, yeah. If it doesn't dispense tuner, frankly, B12, I'm just not interested. That's pretty light, though. So it looks like, and you've probably figured this out for yourself, that the city was one of many, uh, built as a sort of survival shelter to keep people alive after some kind of ecological disaster. 
they talked about a plague bit topical a bit close to the knuckle um, but hey what are you gonna do and over the what must have been hundreds of years the people all basically died off including the engineers here in the control room so the entire city is still on the lockdown cycle oh hang on a minute ah, right wow really it's like the computer the computers are all on they've just gone into sleep mode <laughs> So, <laughs> I have to turn them all on just by walking over the keyboards. Well, I, I am a cat. <laughs> I love the way the developers have made certain of the puzzles to be completed by just doing what cats do. <laughs> What's that? Walk over keyboards and interrupt people working on computers? Oh, I've got... I'm all over that one. I like the way this little robot thinks. He clearly understands cats. Right, so. It looks like there are three systems that need to be disabled. Represented by the three locks. So. I have to break stuff and he's going to hack it. The problem, I'm not really seeing an awful lot of breakable stuff. I mean, we can break the coffee cups on top of the consoles. That's no problem. I excel at that. There's all of these tables in the break room with cups that are just begging to be knocked off. I mean, I've got that covered. But none of that is going to disable security systems, is it? it? It turns out that once again, I'm really overthinking things. In fact, I'd actually managed to disable two of the three locking systems before I figured out exactly what it was that I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> was allowing me to disable the locking systems. So, and I've just completely failed to notice the first one. No, no, it's not me. No, there's nothing there. Look. Do you see the computer screen with a lock on it? Yeah. Next to each one of those screens, there is a thing that I can destroy. Here we go. Now, I wasn't paying attention, and when we come back to it, we'll see. But the orange screen with the lock icon on it, once I sabotage the wiring, changed to a blue screen. You just caught a glimpse of it there that B12 can actually interact with. There's another one here. And again, I haven't actually figured out what it is that I'm doing or why it's working. I just know I'm breaking stuff. <laughs> so. so here goes number two. And you'll notice, even though I didn't at the time, that the orange sodium padlock icon on the screen has changed to a clear blue, ready to be hacked screen. And it's the same with the first one that I did in the other corner of the room. Uh, there is a third, because there are three locking systems that need to be disabled. There it is, the screen with the sodium orange lock icon. I mean, I don't know how the game could have made it much more obvious. <laughs> yeah, I still completely failed to miss it. Yeah. And only realised, completely by accident, that the B12 could actually hack these screens. Although, not without some cost. Uh-oh. You see, it hurts, B12, due to... Uh, Intrusion countermeasure electronics every time he pulls off one of these hacks. And I think it was only here where I realised exactly what it was that I had actually successfully been doing. But pulling off these hacks is exerting more and more of a toll on B12. Hmm. 
that's the point where I figured out what was going on. Okay, two locks down, one to go. And I thought, oh, hang on. Locks. Oh, right. Locks. I get it. Two down, one to go before I actually figured it out. So somehow, B12 has to interact with that thing. Well, I say I figured it out. I still haven't completely figured it out. I hadn't figured out what it was that caused that screen to go from the lock icon to the blue ready to be hacked interface. I mean, it's pretty simple. There were three of these monitors with the sodium orange lock icon displayed on them. And next to each one, there was a panel that I could mess around with to screw up the wiring, taking out security systems, I don't know, whatever, allowing B12 to actually hack. It took me an embarrassingly... The, the fact that I was able to do two out of the three without even realising what it was that I was doing is pretty remarkable. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Because it means even if you're a dumbass at puzzles like me, you can still enjoy this game. It's not hard. I mean, I've just demonstrated my inability to understand what it was that I was doing and still complete two-thirds of it successfully. <laughs> It's here where the penny finally drops, and I'm thinking, okay, so there's got to be something around here that, ah. And yes, I know, that did pop up at least twice when I was around here previously, but here we go. Let's claw the shit out of this. And then, there it is. That's why I couldn't interact with it. Go, go, gadget B12, do your stuff. But unfortunately... I've got your little robot buddy. Although positioning him precisely on the workstation is a, it's a little tricky. No, maybe if I just face up towards the door. There we go. That'll do. Gotcha. All right, B12. Do your stuff. Oh, he's removing my harness. You're not going to make me cry, B12, all right. This is a very well-written game, by the way. I mean, he's basically a floating Pop-Tart toaster, and they've managed to imbue him with so much personality. And now he's gone. Oh, it's all right, Ginger. Well, it isn't. <laughs> he's dead. I mean, really dead now. Obviously, he's been dead for hundreds of years, but now he's gone. Oh. This one hits me right in the fields. But he did it. The city is opening. I mean, the roof opening doesn't do me any good, because I can't climb out through the roof. But, um, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to shut up for a minute and let you enjoy this. Because all of that direct sunlight is going to be real bad news for the Zerks. Oh, it's, um... Oh, I forgot his name. <laughs> yeah. And, um... Yeah, um, I've forgotten their names. I have a cat. If I don't get tuna from them on a daily basis, I'll stop caring. Clementine. I remember her. Hey, she made it. Well, that's good news. It's just a shame we had to lose B12. Oh, look at that. 
You can sit here with B12 for the rest of the game if you want to, apparently. I mean, I say the rest of the game. There is not an awful lot left because we've done it. Or we're in the process of doing it. The roof is opening. But I can't climb out through the roof. So I'm going to have to leave B12 here. Just stop to admire the view. I hope nobody's getting hurt by all that fallen debris being... Uh, they probably are. <laughs> let's not let's not dwell on that too much, because we need to get out. So hopefully the uh, the entrance door will now be open. I think this is very probably it. I feel a bit bad for all the maintenance droids up here who never got a chance to experience individuality. You know, they're basically all still drones. That's it, door's open. It's time for this pussycat to get the hell out of here. I really, really enjoyed this game. I mean, the puzzles weren't exactly difficult. I still managed to screw some of them up. Um, but the difficulty was pitched at exactly the right level where you can focus more on enjoying the story than solving the puzzles. The puzzles are just there as a little bonus sort of added extra. And honestly, none of them were that hard. But we are done. We have made it out. That is the end of the game. I very, very much enjoyed it. Ginger made it out to safety and freedom. Um, and hopefully can reunite with the other friends in the colony. So that was Stray. Uh, heartily recommend this game. I mean, let's face it. If you love cats, you've probably already got and played this game. And you got this far long before I did. But for those of you who haven't, I hope you've enjoyed the journey because this has been a short but extremely enjoyable game to play. Hang on, what happened? Why did the music suddenly stop? Ooh, did you see that? Some of the computer systems just came back on. Are they planning a sequel? <laughs> I certainly hope so, because I'd definitely play more of this. So, yeah, that was Stray. Um, I mean, if you've made it this far, I don't need to say I hope you've enjoyed it because I know you already have. One little thing that I did notice in the credits, which was kind of nice, because apparently they also, they motion captured cats. Quite a few cats, apparently. There were lots of cats involved in the making of this game and some dogs, and that makes me really happy. What makes me sad, however, is that some of those cats are no longer with us. And they're all memorialized in the credits and that's really nice but anyway that's it if you're still here i know you've enjoyed it and uh, thank you all for coming along on this journey take care stay safe and i'll catch you next time